Amen. Amen. Um, Jason, you need to um, enable screen sharing, please. Greg, I'm going to be listening, but I'm also going to be watching Gigi, and I just want to be upfront about that. <laughs> <laughs> I had the hardest okay. time not being able to physically squeeze Gigi during the baptism because she's oh. just so darling. I'm just such a baby person. Oh. Yes. Okay. Can you guys see the something? Okay. Um, so first of all, I think I know everyone, um, but if we haven't had a chance to meet, um, I'm Greg Finich. I'm the treasurer for Salt House and also a member of the Salt House Council. Um, you know, First of all, thank you for allowing me this time uh, to share our H1 financial results. Um, just to let everyone know, our H1 is from the beginning of the fiscal year, July 1st until the end of December. Um, and to kind of give you a preview of what I'm going to be going through, so I have um, some new thermometer slides or charts that I put together to really give us a good idea where we are on our general giving as well as our community initiative fund performance. Um, I'm then gonna walk through our year to date um, overall performance of income and expenses. And then finally uh, a view of our assets and liabilities. Um, but, you know, as a principal, you know, Salt House really supports full, full transparency to our members and our guests of Salt House regarding our finances. and. Just as a reminder, the budget numbers that we'll be talking about or sharing today were voted on at our annual congregation, congregational meeting. And then, you know, as well, I wanted to remind everyone that this year we really, um, you know, we're kind of looking at how we could grow the community. And so we have a full year of the incremental costs for our extended staff hours. And that was primarily increasing Jason to full time while Sarah reduced to three quarters time and then um, Pastor Ryan for a full 12 months at half time. And this was all done with the intention of really investing in our community to grow and deepen the community in participation and, and generosity. And so, you know, consequently, when we looked at these additional operating expenses that we were going to need to incur, we had to increase our general giving. And so therefore we intentionally called out what we, what we labeled the faith and growth line in our budget to help us measure progress. So with that said, I'm going to advance to the next slide. And so this is the, the um, general giving and faith and growth budget. Our fiscal year target was 346,000 or it is 346,449. You can say, you can see that I took the liberty to, to borrow a, a this is good because, you know, I couldn't find a this is great um, picture. So I went with this is good. But, you know, going into uh, the end of November, we were behind. Um, and so, you know, we ended up at 178,000 year to date in our general giving. And to give you some perspective, the monthly general giving budget is just under 29,000. And that includes 6,700 of faith and growth each month. And prior to December, we only had one month which exceeded the total general giving budget. And that was in September where we had general giving of just over 38,000. And again, that meant when we were going into December, we were behind on our year to date number. However, December blew it out. Um, it was the highest month of giving in Salt House history at $54,274. That's, you know, 25,403 more than <laughs> our monthly budget. Mm -hmm. So um, even more exciting, you know, as we kind of would break down to see um, what comprised the giving, it was really volume. And what I mean by that is historically, we've had some months where we've been a beneficiary of a, a large one-time gift, which those are always welcome, but this was actually a lot more giving. And so, um, you know, 
given the unknown impact of COVID-19 um, on our fiscal performance, that's why I say this is good. Um, and so on behalf of the Salt House Council and staff, we want to share our gratitude to everyone. As we know, you know, everyone's living under extraordinary times. And, you know, your generosity is a major source for us to continue to build our community. So thank you on that. Mm -hmm. um, to the right, looking at the Community Initiatives Fund, um, we continue to outperform our budget. Um, you know, our fiscal year target, as you can see, was only 20,000. Um, and so I actually had to adjust the thermometer to 35,000 um, for display purposes uh, so that we could actually start showing the progress on that. I don't know where we'll end up on that, um, but again, thank you because these are, these are funds that are earmarked for homelessness and they really help support the needs of our neighbors at Kirkland Place. Um, and as a reminder, most recently in Q2, we catered that Thanksgiving dinner. We've been donating gift baskets for the, the staff there. And we wanna be able to use these funds to continue to do things like that. And so again, thank you for the support for the community initiatives funds. Any questions before I move on? I mean, this is amazing. And I mean, I, I, I would hope six months from now, we're looking at this blue bar going over 350,000. But um, for now, this is good. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. It's so good. Very good. Uh. So this is an all up look at our income. I just spoke about the faith and growth and general giving. So you can see the actual numbers and where we were over by uh, just under 5,000. The other area that I wanna call out is our church building use income. And so you can see that we're actually over budget, which is great. Um, and kind of two things that are playing into that. One, um, increased use by other churches um, faster than we had budgeted for. We didn't really know um, with COVID when they would start using it on a more regular basis and that's happening. And then we had a couple of what we call just unplanned use where some groups that wanted to rent space for us from us. And so again, um, overperformance there, which is great. It brings our overall total income um, over budget by just under 7,000. You can see down here, the numbers for community initiative funds, um, you know, halfway through the year, we're 15, over 15,000 over budget. So really good income performance across the different categories. Um, on our expenses, um, you can see all up down at the bottom line total expenses, we are trending below, which is, you know, great fiscal management from the standpoint of, you know, our expenses not being higher than budget. Um, couple of things to call out as we go down uh, the different categories, we're under budget on staffing and that's really driven by a couple of things. One, um, we have some underspend in the continuing education and connecting ministry. Obviously with COVID, some things aren't as easy to do, but we also have an open role um, part-time supporting Rachel that has not been filled yet that we budgeted for. So that's creating some of the underspend. Benevolence, um, which is basically our tithing. Um, and because income is over, um, we're also over on benevolence, which is expected. Office, we're below budget, primarily due to savings from no mailings and printing. You know, when we were meeting in person, we used to do a lot more mailings to invite people to Salt House. Now that we're online, we're not needing to do that uh, as much. Building and grounds, um, it's actually showing over, um, which based on accounting it is, but we do have a situation that is outstanding with uh, the reimbursement from uh, the new Bethlehem Day Center. When the Kirkland place um, started up, uh, we had some challenges and Renee has been super working with the city of Kirkland on really getting the billing correct. Um, and so we expect that reimbursement to come in in this next quarter. So I would expect to see our building and grounds actually be below budget. Um, and then ministry programs, that's below budget. So a couple things going on there. We have, you know, the generosity of the community that um, paid for or donated to the 
Advent Cozy kits, um, which was a higher amount than the actual expenses. And so that's giving us some savings there. And then also, obviously, because we have not been meeting in person, we're having savings in the hospitality and events. Um, and then we also have some underspend in children, youth, and family. And finally, um, we have some unused memorial garden donations that we will, that is providing a credit, but we expect to spend those um, in the coming months as the, the final phase, if you will, of the garden will be implemented. Any, any questions on our first half year to date expenses? Hey, Greg, are there any um, deferred maintenance issues that we have yet to tackle uh, for buildings and grounds. I, I like I've not really been in the building a lot in terms of thinking about those things. Like are there any leaks or roof issues or um, you know things like that that you know of that that are sort of on the back burner right now? I I know Anne's deferring to Jim maybe on that. But I do know that there were um, some requests um, to add some windows in some of the meeting room doors upstairs. Those were deferred um, until a later time. Otherwise, I think the maintenance where it's needed to happen has been happening. Um, I would say from my point of view, I haven't spoken to the building and grounds. There's probably some continued maintenance that would need to be done on the parsonage. Um, you know, and, and so if somebody wants to chime in, if they're working with the building and grounds group on any large expenditures that we've deferred, Renee's on the call. I don't know if Renee, you have something to, to update us around that and it's okay if not to, but. Yeah, uh, I don't have my list with me. We have some um, a to do a honeydew list that we're working <laughs> on, but nothing astronomical. Yeah. yeah. Great, that's helpful, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Jim would ditto that and <laughs> definitely deferred to Renee um, in what what is needed. I think that Renee, isn't there one little area where we need to do some repair in the hallway toward the nursery? But other than that, yeah, there really isn't. Yeah. And I know um, just a shout out to Clay, our wonderful um, groundskeeper who has been up on the roof cleaning things up to keep us, our roof and everything under control. Yeah, yeah. we were fortunate last year to be able to, you know, install the new hot water heater, put in the AC, um, do the bathroom in the kids area. So those were, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. larger expenses that we didn't defer. Um, but we will, you know, if it's something that makes sense to do now, we certainly will do it. Okay, so this is overall summary. Um, again, where we have our total income of 212 um, expenses just a little bit under, I mean, we actually, are at a net income, net operating income. You can see to the right, we were actually knowing that we had a lot of aspirations for this budget. We felt like, hey, we actually, at, after six months, may be having a net operating loss. And we were up until this point. So, you know, again, month of December really brought us over. And this is very positive considering where we were going into it when you know, we didn't know what to expect with COVID. Um, so assets and liabilities, just a reminder, assets, these are things that Salt House owns. Um, you know, um, you know the, a large amount of our savings, if you go back, was really given to us by the proceeds from the sale of the land um, and the gifting of the property. So we continue to be thankful for that. Um, just some call out. So, this balance of 130,000 includes $33,000 of community initiative funds, which means it's restricted. It's not able to be used for our general operating costs. I did go back in September um, and the amount was about the same. Um, and so, you know, it's not like we are losing ground on checking to provide for our operating costs, um, but I did want to call that out. Savings. I didn't have to make a, um, a transfer from our savings into checking, which is also a good sign because we're able to cover. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to call out, um, if you weren't on a previous uh, service, Jason and, and Sarah, I think may have mentioned this, we have a new brokerage account. 
and so this really enables um, gifting of stock to Salt House. And so in December, we did receive a stock donation, which was a little over $5,000. Um, and um, I'll speak about it in the, the ways we can gift, but I have since sold it, actually sold it um, Friday. We will get the funds into our savings on Monday, but um, given the way the stock market was, we actually sold it for a little bit more. Not a lot, but uh, we didn't lose anything on that, which is a good thing. Yay. Unless we Thank make- Thank you for any... putting that together, Greg. There's information related to that available on the giving page if people are interested in looking at it. And I assume you'll mention that again later. Yeah, um, COVID has provided some unique opportunities relative to banking for Salt House, whether it's trying to order deposit bags, um, you cannot just go pick them up, um, or you know, trying to open a brokerage account um, with, you know, when you're working with people back east. And so um, we did get it open. Um, hopefully it's kind of self-sustaining and, and not a lot of work. Um, on the fixed assets, we don't really anticipate changes here. This would only change if we made a capital investment either in the building um, or something with equipment. So these numbers will pretty much stay steady. If we go over to the ride, our liability. So this is really what we owe other people. Um, again, we are fortunate as a church not to have long-term debt. Um, you can see down here, it's zero. Um, really the driver, why our liabilities are higher at the end of December is driven by benevolence, which I spoke about earlier. Um, so we haven't uh, Renee has since made payment on this, but at the end of December, we had um, outstanding um, payment to make on the benevolence tithing. Um, I'm going to move on. Primary giving options. Obviously, if we were in person, you would hear the, the hooping and hollering for the gold <laughs> jar. <laughs> um, but that's out of service. Our main giving has been through online and texting. Um, as, I do want to say the original gold jo gold joy jar, I think was actually painted by Lindsay Dunman. Isn't that right, Lindsay? <laughs> like she painted it for us. Uh, anyway, when we, when we were getting started. Sorry. Nice. Um, you can see over here, I put in new. So this is gifting. There's more information on uh, the South House site, but a couple things just to consider. You know, you should be working with your financial advisor or your investment company that holds it. They will give you the, the correct forms and all that. Um, at the Salt House website, there will be the information that you will need to provide them as well. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we are not in the business of holding stock long term. And so as a finance committee, we talked about it and our general principle would be to sell it as soon as um, we receive it. Um, and so, you know, if you have a reason for us holding it longer and designate it for something specific, i.e. it becomes restricted, in that case, then we would actually hold on to it longer. But without any restrictions, the plan would be to sell it. And last, uh, don't forget, if you're doing Amazon shopping, uh, you can go to Amazon Smile, um, select Salt House Church. I actually got an email a couple of weeks ago saying, gave me a summary of uh, how much money went to Salt House from giving, which I guess because we moved partially to Arizona and you're doing a lot of shopping on Amazon, it benefits Salt <laughs> House. Um, and then again, um, if you are a member of Salt or of Microsoft, or you have friends that work at Microsoft, you could remember about um, the giving through the Give Campaign portal that will actually match funds. And so that's always a, a great way to kind of make donations go that much further. So with that- Can I just um, interject on that? Um, yes. You have to actually go, like I have a Prime account and if I don't go into Amazon Smile, it won't give me the Amazon uh, Smile mm -hmm. benefit because I do give to Salt House, but I, I got caught off guard that I, wasn't calling that up for my ordering. So not, yes. not everything goes there. So you just have to make sure you're doing it. Yeah, good point, Robbie. Any, that's, I think my, this is my last slide. So um, open to any questions. Um, you know, we, our finance committee is open. You're always welcome to join. We meet once a month, usually the second Tuesday of the month, uh, right before the council meeting on Wednesday, second Wednesday. 
Um, want to shout out to Renee and, and Katie Hoyer, who's not on the call. They've been doing a, a great job um, keeping us going. And then for Scott Moore and Dale Ketke for joining us as well. But, um, you know, if you're interested, reach out to me. Good job, Greg. Awesome. Great to go, yeah. Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thank, Thank you. you. Greg. Thank you, Greg. Yes, you great job. Welcome. Thank you. I will stop sharing. I guess that's up to me to stop sharing. Best <laughs> financial report ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Very good. Oh, this very good. is good. All right. It, I think it, it was hard to keep, refrain from spilling the beans earlier, but I'm glad you guys could hear it in person. I maybe did a little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put this here. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Gigi. Hi, Gigi. Hi, Gigi. Hi. What's up? <laughs> oh. your mama. Oh. Hello. Oh. oh, my goodness. Oh, so sweet. Yeah. The epitome of this is good. Yes. Oh, yeah.